Uh, welcome back to SPAN 312, Hopscotch, a survey of Latin America in translation. And uh, today I'm very, very pleased to have uh, with me uh, an old friend, uh, Juan Poblete, who uh, teaches at the University of California at Santa Cruz. Uh, Juan Poblete uh, has written very extensively on all kinds of topics in 19th and 20th century uh, Latin American literature, on sport, on humor, on education, on intellectual property. He's also written a book about the Chilean novelist and chronicler Pedro Lemebel, a book called La Escritura de Pedro Lemebel como Proyecto Cultural y Político. And we'll be talking about this book, Pedro Lemebel's novel, titled in English, My Tender Matador, in Spanish, originally, Tengo Miedo Torero. Many thanks, uh, Juan, for your time and, and for doing this. And I'll just start with a very open question, which is, how would you approach uh, this text? Thank you, John. Um, it's a pleasure to be here in such um, good company, uh, from what I gather of your previous uh, uh, guest, and uh, in the company of you and your students. Um, so, um, I actually dealt with your question when I wrote um, a long chapter at the end of my book on Lemebel. Um, and I decided to approach the novel by establishing three uh, different parts to the chapter. So my claim in that chapter is, is pretty longish. It's like 70 pages long uh, printed. Um, um, and I'm gonna do my best today to summarize those 70 pages uh, in a way that makes sense within the time we have. Um, three parts. On the one hand, I claim there is uh, an explicit theory of the novel uh, and of literature in the chapter. Second, uh, there is what I call a politics of the pose uh, involved uh, in the chapter, and I will explain what I mean by that. And finally, there is an effective and utopic reconstruction of the political climate, the social political climate of Chile in the 1980s during the dictatorship. So I, I could uh, try to go on and explain uh, this tripartite uh, structure, um, if that is good enough, an answer to your first question. Perfect. Uh, so the, the first of those is the theory of the novel. Um, I'd lo love to hear more. Good. So, but before I do that, before I go on to explain those three parts, I want to uh, make a couple of, of contextualizations that may actually help understand uh, what we're talking about here. In this book on Lemebel, which is one of the few books that is a monographic on Lemebel, there are a few now, and uh, um, but um, at the time there were only uh, one in French. Uh, and maybe um, one in Spanish. Um, um, in chapter four of this book, I describe um, what I think is useful to understand Lemebel in general. That is, Lemebel lived in three historical times. He lived the Unidad Popular, uh, the popular unity uh, period, uh, uh, Salvador Allende government from 1970 to 1973, and perhaps before with the campaign that that, that uh, successfully ended in his uh, presidency. Um, and I call that the prehistoric uh, time for Lemebel. Uh, it's, it's a time that is full of, of uh, uh, political accomplishments. He is young. He is very energetic, Lemebel, that is. Um, then there is the historic time. The first one was pre, the second one is the historic time, and that corresponds to the time of the dictatorship. And sort of in Hegelian terms, this is a time full of struggle, of conflict, and there is an effort to prevail on both sides, the dictatorship on the one hand, and the significantly radicalized opposition to uh, the dictator. Um, and the third time is the post-historical time, that is to say, paradoxically, the time of democracy coming back to Chile in 1990, uh, a time that for Lemebel is full of the sort of um, anticlimactic reality of what democracy was going to mean now under a neoliberal, uh, a neoliberal Chile 
um, that was more interested in looking forward and moving on than in remembering and establishing both memory and justice. So those three times are, are useful for an understanding of Lemebel's uh, career. Another distinction that is useful is to understand that Lemebel's um, literary career um, has um, at least two big moments. There is one moment that is Kronika Center in which he produces, in my view, the best of his uh, 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 literature um, with two classic uh, uh, books, um, El Loco Afan and uh, La Esquina Es Mi Corazón. And uh, in that, there is a significant process of centrality of the queer queen, La Loca, which we will see in the novel in a moment, uh, metamorphosized and, and also older. Um, but it's a, it's a process that places the loca at the very center, but it's sort of an anonymous loca. It's mm -hmm. not a particular loca, it's the loca as such. Um, and uh, it is significantly concerned with exploring a literature of desire that is capable of finding a language to express a form of desire and sexuality that had not been dominant in Chilean letters. Uh, the second stage of his literary career is the moment when he, when he has become a national and international author. He can go nowhere without being recognized. There is no longer the anonymous loca that could go out and write about these escapades. He is now a central famous author defined paradoxically by his stubborn insistence that he is not part of the establishment, that he is the anti-establishment figure and significantly delivering on that anti-establishment positioning through his media uh, interventions and his proliferating um, sets of interviews. So many that now there is a good book um, of interviews with Lemebel. Okay, so I promise I was going to try to develop the structure of the chapter. The chapter, as I said, has three parts. Um, there is a theory of uh, uh, the novel uh, in, um, in the chapter. Uh, the, that theory uh, in Le Mebel in general, but in this novel too, is concerned with um, what had been Le Mebel's previous self-positioning in relation to literature and what he called hegemonic uh, uh, novels. Um, Chileans, uh, by tradition, have been, um, Chile has been a country of novelists and poets, very famous ones like Pablo Neruda, uh, Jose Donoso, um, Gabriela Mistral, Vicente Huidobro, Nicanor Parra. Um, and he, Lemebel, was a chronica writer. And what, what was the chronica? And the chronica was like a, um, a hybrid. It was literary in the mass media and it was mass mediatic in literature. Um, it was short, yet it reached a wide audience. It was literary through processes of metaphorization and figural uh, writing, but it was also destined to be consumed as part of the daily life of readers of all kinds of classes, uh, social classes, that is. Um, so one of the things Lemebel needs to do in this, and, and Lemebel had been very explicit about his um, suspicion and even disdain in relation to the novel as a genre, calling the novel at times uh, one of the aesthetic um, fixations of the bourgeoisie in Chile and in general. Um, so what was he doing writing a novel and what kind of novel could, should he write? Um, is the issue that he is facing uh, here. And he develops um, a significant theory of what such a novel could be by writing this novel um, that I call um, in Spanish, La novela romance homosexual del dictador, the, the romance novel, the homosexual romance novel of the dictator in order to allude to two of the things that Lemebel is 
transforming here. One is the long tradition of dictators uh, and dictatorship novels in Latin America, uh, a tradition that has many, many famous uh, texts, including Yo el Supremo, Augusto Roabastos, El Otoño del Patriarca, Gabriel García Márquez, uh, El Señor Presidente, Miguel Ángel Asturias, Tirano Banderas, Ramón del Valle Inclán, who is a Spaniard, but it's, it's, it's a Latin American dictatorship that is being imagined, and many more. Uh, and to which we could add now more recent authors such as Vargas Llosa, for example. Uh, he, Lemebel, is trying to connect with this tradition and subvert it. And so the dictatorship in this novel will be a dictatorship full of fear, mm -hmm. even um, hesitant about his own sexual attractions, uh, dominated by his... Uh, pretty um, um, mm, how could I say that um, dominated by his wife uh, 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 Doña Lucia uh, historically um, in the novel with no name um, that on the one side Lemebel is also trying to connect with a different tradition of Latin American letters which is perhaps best embodied by Kiss of the Spider Woman, El Beso de la Mujer Araña by Manuel Puig, in which Puig, similarly to what very consciously Lemebel is trying to do here, tries to connect the politics of arms and struggle, the politics of ideology and ideas with the politics of sexuality, gender and affects and emotion. And so it is the blend of these two things that will produce in Lemebel um, um, a novel, a short novel, and he will be uh, insistent after writing the novel that he probably wasn't going to write another novel, that he had not become a novelist, that he did not want to become a novelist, that this was not even a novel exactly, more like a novella, uh, like a short novel, a sort of experimental attempt at dealing with some 30 or so pages that he had written during the 90s and had left in some drawer um, abandoned. Um, and that explains that that dual effort of connecting with those two traditions explains uh, uh, the structure of the novel, which if you think structurally or like a structuralist, uh, is organized around uh, uh, two couples uh, Carlos and La Loca, the, the, the queer uh, queen, uh, on the one hand, and uh, the dictator and his wife on the other. Both of them are an exploration separately, but also through the text together, of issues of class, issues of gender relations, um, and uh, more generally of binaries that uh, separate politics with capital P from politics with lowercase p, or political politics and sexual politics or gender politics or the politics of everyday life or affected politics, if you will. Um, now, now you, you, you said that what this does, and you said this was gonna be the second stage, was rehabilitate a politics of the post. Do you think you could say a little bit more about that? Yes, and so, once he has developed um, this theory of the novel to his satisfaction, he will place at the very core of his novel, this idea of the pose. And the pose is, you know, in Latin American letters, a concept that was developed from queer theory in the US um, by uh, an NYU scholar, Argentine uh, American scholar named uh, Silvia Molloy. And, and Molloy um, develops this idea that in late 19th century, decadent period in Latin American literature, uh, a series of poseurs, of people posing that are normally homosexuals appear in Latin American literature and that the function the function they perform on Latin American letters has been overlooked. And in the pose, the one who is not is trying to pretend to be what he or she is not 
in the process, she or he is questioning what are those who are what they think they are and to what extent. So it's sort of subverting by performing identity and making the performative side of identity something that can be discussed. So instead of being essential or biologically given, a sexual identity is something, or, or a personal identity, a subjective identity, is something that you perform. And in the effort of performing, you can exaggerate it, distort it, and of course, change it from performance to performance. So this is important for queer studies in general. In this particular case, it's important for uh, uh, Lemebel, who places at the heart of this uh, book a series of such poses, the most famous of which, or the most perhaps relevant in the whole text, is the one of Carlos sitting uh, by the road, trying to uh, reconnect the, the road where the attempt at killing Pinochet will take place while pretending to have a picnic with his um, heterosexual partner, which is La Loca, of course, dress as a woman and performing womanhood. And in that process, Carlos is um, sort of invited to question his political politics and acknowledge his affective connection with this loca who he originally simply saw as an instrument to accomplish both the hiding of the weapons that will be used in the attempt uh, of uh, killing the dictator, and uh, also uh, a good cover if you want to explore the surroundings where the, the attempt was going to take place. Um, there is a very famous chronica by Lemebel uh, called La Noche de los Bisones, the Night uh, of the Mink Coats, uh, that I highly recommend, uh, in which Lemebel sort of rewrites the political and sexual history of Chile by looking at a picture of a number of locas, like the loca of uh, uh, my tender matador, who experience from different class positions. This is rich locas with poor locas coming together for a party uh, uh, on New Year's Eve to which um, uh, serving of turkey, which in, C in Chile is rare and expensive, has been promised and is nowhere to be seen. And there is a whole lot of chicken, but there's a, a whole lot of leftover uh, bones uh, left, which function in the cronica as an extraordinary, powerful um, uh, um, reference to what was going to come, because this is happening in December 1972, uh, as nine months before the coup d'etat. And those bones would be both the bones of the violence uh, that the dictatorship brought to Chile, but also the bones of AIDS, which was uh, going to uh, hit Chile in the next decade as it did uh, the rest of the world. Um, so through the analysis of these two forms of death that were forthcoming through uh, the close reading of the pose of each one of these locas in the picture, Lemebel's um, sort of creates a poetics that you can actually see inscribed in uh, the novel um, uh, clearly. So he, I, I'm interested in you talking about the the pose and the visual, the, the these analysis of pictures, for instance. There's there's mention of the that visual aspect in uh, in My Tender Matador, and, and also the visual aspect of of on the other hand of the dictator. And and also his interest in in radio and popular music in other in, in what is not I suppose strictly the literary, but but other genres and other forms of of cultural expression perhaps particular to nineteen eighties Chile. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, so uh, to close this second part about the the, the politics of the polls. Um, um, the, the pose allows Lemebel to question, as I was saying, um, uh, essentialisms. The, the pose allows him uh, to highlight the performative side of identity, but it also functions as a generating mechanism for producing text. That is to say, he can stop action 
and then analyze a la Proust a certain moment, a certain pulse, and, and produce narrative uh, tension and narrative development through these um, sort of non-novelistic uh, means um, or not action specific uh, means. Um, what that means in the text is that we will have a guerrilla fighter who is pretending not to fall in love with the queen, a queen who is pretending to be stupid while falling in love with a gorilla and also pretending that she's not gonna get involved by going knee deep into the involvement, uh, uh, preparing uh, the potential uh, uh, killing of uh, Pinochet. So posing becomes paradoxically a way through which certain true things develop, like the true relationship between Carlos and La Loca like the true transformation of La Loca from apolitical in the text at the beginning, very, very specifically so and explicitly so, into a very political Loca who will do a number of things in the text to show that she's changed politically. So the third part of the, of the chapter, uh, and thank you for the reminder of that, um, is what I call an effective uh, political reconstruction of the social political climate of the 1980s in Chile. And Lemeville had, during a number of years, a radio program in which he played music and provide commentary on the music. The music had always been selected from a very Lemeville angle. So it had to do with uh, sexuality. It had to do with all times. It had to do with political violence. It had to do with any number of his preferred uh, subjects. Generally speaking, we could say popular music in Lemeville, both in his program and in his uh, chronicas and, and in this novel, function as counter memory devices. Paradoxically, by going to all music, all by the standards of the 2000, the novel is published in 2001, if I'm not mistaken, um, and also old, old, like 50 year old music, um, by going back, Lemeville always insisted on let's go beyond the neoliberal present in which American music dominates through the whole paraphernalia of the techno industrial apparatus of its diffusion through uh, mass media, in particular uh, television, which was and continues to be the dominant mass media uh, uh, in Chile. So instead of working in television in which he would every time he was invited, show up and do a spectacle, do a performance and subvert the invitation that he had been provided with. This very conscious effort to intervene in the mass media of television about which he was extraordinarily doubtful, blaming television with being an apparatus of uh, forgetting in uh, neoliberal Chile, um, in what he called the spectacularization of Chilean life, the, the turning into spectacle or farandula, as he uh, mentioned, of everything, including Chilean politics, um, sort of the Trumpification, uh, if you will, of Chilean politics through television. Um, Lemebel never trusted television and always intervened strategically. Instead, he was very driven to participate in radio. And so he had this radio program in a, a small community-oriented, not-for-profit radio called Radio Tierra uh, in Chile for a number of years. And the, the program was called Cancionero. And you can see the workings and the experience, the background of Cancionero in uh, the novel. He was encyclopedic in his knowledge of popular music of years gone. Um, in general, omnivorous, not just Chilean, not just Latin American, also a Spanish uh, 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 music from Spain, including the song that gives the name to uh, the novel, uh, Tengo Miedo Torero. Yeah. Uh, so um, the reconstruction through music and memory is effective and is political uh, in the uh, novel that we are uh, discussing. Um,
the radio, popular music incorporated into a literary text is grounded on an additional crossing of boundaries or um, dissolving hierarchies that Lemebel does in connecting low with high, in connecting popular with elite uh, genres such as the novel for his, uh, uh, in his own mind. That importance of popular uh, music in his text in general, not just in this novel, but also in his chronicas, there is a whole book of the chronicas that Lemebel, um, of chronicas that Lemebel did based on his radio experience. Um, that effort is grounded on a new language, the Barroco Popular, the popular Baroque of um, Pedro Lemebel's literature writing. And of course, if you see popular Baroque, seems to be a contradiction in terms. Yes, uh, Baroque is a style uh, that is charged, full of figures, full of obscure allusions, uh, metaphor, menonini, difficult language in the Spanish tradition, in the Latin American tradition. It is colonial literature and is mostly mm, crown serving literature with some inklings of uh, independence here and there. Um, so, Popular Baroque uh, is, is this contradiction that is uh, my name for the language that Lemebel creates. And this is difficult to translate. The translator of my tender matador does a really valiant effort of translating some of these really thick uh, Chilean uh, popular Baroque that Lemebel produces by combining the language of the street very directly with the language of uh, uh, the written. Um, so, uh, Lemebel is interested in these affective reconstructions through radio and music of this political climate of the 1980s in bringing up this subjective experience. What, what, what did it mean to live through these times? What kind of struggles, what kind of things um, that, are, that, go, that are connected to but go beyond the political history of political events that can be reconstructed in political uh, history classes. Um, and he was punctuated, defined by a series of songs, by a series of, mm, um, a la Proust, a series of mental and memory connections that for him were directly linked to particular songs. And so he had a lot to say about these songs, as we see here in my tender matador, where uh, Tengo Miedo Torero and fear and desire are, as they are in the song originally, are central to the structure of um, the novel. So Lemeville is interested in generating a poetics of the, uh, um, of the affective, um, a certain discourse and a form of producing effects the pose is part of that arsenal. The exaggeration, the language is part of that arsenal. Um, as much as he is in producing a horizon of effects, um, uh, these affects, which are effects, these affective effects, uh, are about memory, who we are, what is it that we were struggling, and all of them will converge on the same. Utopia means the overcoming of binaries that have separated sexual minorities from the mainstream, politics with lowercase p from politics with capital P, um, the past from the neoliberal present, the tradition of aspiring for equality and transformation revolution with the insistence on well-being through consumption and forgetting in neoliberalism. Uh, he saw himself as overcoming all of these binaries, paradoxically, by continuously deploying these bi binaries in order to uh, subvert them from within, um, using popular forms, popular language, in order to um, generate a revolutionary disruptive intervention in Chilean letters, I think he succeeded. Well, that, that's a, a, a fantastic um, uh, account and a, a very articulate 
uh, taking us through the various uh, means that uh, Le Mabel, uh, deploys, even hesitantly engaging with, with literature um, to recover something uh, uh, from the past. And, and this vision of a utopia of, of dissolved boundaries uh, is, is, is fascinating and I think a very helpful way uh, of thinking about this book. We're out of time. Thank you so much uh, for doing so, to, for, for providing so much in in a relatively short uh, amount of time that was that was really really uh, uh, helpful and fascinating and interesting thank you juan uh, for your time and your expertise thank you john for the invitation i hope this is uh, useful thanks <laughs>